do this thing. Do 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 do. Is this where the bumper is going? And we it already talk? went. The bumper. I already <laughs> done bumped it, Trent. We're in. Get owned. That's right. Get uh, owned. Ladies guys. and gentlemen, Monkey boys and girls, King. welcome six. to game two. Ninjas six. in pajamas. Horse. Game six. Five, game six. Game six. Game six. Versus I have Team made Empire. Best of seven. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully, Suns fans set our in-game ticker properly this time. Uh, NIP took game number one. They uh, did, did you defeated I think the so? Yes, I think so. <laughs> Hopefully, I hope so. I, it I wouldn't want be to be fired as admin. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to revitalize. The, Who would the do role the roles? The whole, Who would do the, the roles if not you? Exactly. Dude. This is what happens uh, when you get volunteers to admin your lobbies. It's all <laughs> it's all bad news. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Got to pay those guys. You can't hold them accountable for anything. I need money to screw up, please. <laughs> you got to get Andre. The real deal admin. You have to make him do the roles, though. Boys and girls, I remember, uh, you can get that Blade Form Legacy Arcana and the Sweated Upon signed, stiddled How? NIP jersey. You got to find that How gleam do I get link. it? It's below the Twitch stream, Trent. If you're Where? watching on Join Dota or Gosu Gamers or even on Moonduck.tv, or on go, Dota to, TV. go to Twitch TV and Moonduck TV, and you'll find a button under there. You'll see Cinderin's big old gullet, Can, and that's that's how you know you're I, in the right place. I just want to say for all of our Dota TV viewers that have the Captain's Draft 3 ticket, we love you. You've supported yep. us that's true. through so much. What's You're set actually comes with insane. It? I don't know, but I honestly, it's amazing that they're still here. Uh, yeah. Nothing comes with it. It's just a ticket. It's just a ticket? Yeah, they're yeah. you're beautiful, beautiful people, chest. and I oh, love you. Oh, it was a separate chest. Okay. How much does it cost? The chest did oh. not do Are we like still getting money for that? Is that why we keep getting payments from Valve? Is that Probably. the Captain's Draft 3 ticket? I mean, at oh, some point, like, it, you can't buy it in the store anymore, it's right? Like There's $20 only $20 a month. It no, pays you, for You can Jack still buy box. it. Like, is it not, like, in the limited supply or something? The ticket? No. If you want to go back and, like... You can buy a ticket and watch the replays for some tournament that's done. Oh, yeah, you can just you're go back right. and buy D, uh, like D2L Season 3 or something. So, guys, let me tell you how much value you're getting out of this <laughs> ticket. It's a lot. You're getting this. You're getting wow. EM. You're getting CD. All right, just go get it. Are you a fan of Southeast Asian Dota? <laughs> <laughs> I Boy, am. we have a ticket for you then. <laughs> You guys been putting SEA on this ticket too? Oh yeah, dude. What no, do you not, think, uh, not, not Mr. That, Cat and C Cap? No, C Cap is on its own. Oh yeah, C Cap has its own. Right? Am I right about that, Trent? Well, we don't do no, it. No, I, I put. We don't uh, do it. No, I don't. C Cap is on a different tickets. I, yeah, exactly. I was putting Mr. Cat on D2CL. We put this season last season. Oh yeah, that's right, on. Mr. Cat, because you didn't have the the CD3 yeah, I don't ticket. Have the <laughs> so yeah. that's another value ticket. Oh, that's true. I can't add anybody. It's like such a broken system. Oh yeah, it's because it's closed now. We can't. I was add like, new I was like, I have it. You could just let me do it. But we figured it out halfway through, and we didn't want to f it up. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, Lena's back, guys. Um, and Earth Spirit's still in, but they're gonna opt for the the Magnus. So this was often talked about, right? In terms of at DAC, we we heard PVD say it numerous times. But Magnus, the the whole idea to counter to like the the OG general strategies, be it Alchemist or be it Terrorblade, be it Illusions, he he gives you fantastic uh, late game team fight. He gives you AOE clear with Empower. Plus, he himself is pretty good at AOE clear between Empower as well as Shockwave. So, uh, pretty strong hero. And uh, the answer to not getting Naga. So safe opener, I would say, from Team Empire. Yeah. Ooh, the clock. And yeah, work. there he is. The clock. Yeah. Comfort Excellent. Pick, as we talked about. The Trixie clock. Yep. You like how the... Reserve time. Now that we're not... Our Lena's aren't picking the minus respawn. It actually makes no difference. doesn't feel like it makes much of a difference. Yeah. Dyer's it's just the 50 back. damage is so good. Yeah, yeah. you just need it. I've but seen last game. This hero, was it like past a month ago? Wasn't seen at all, right? Yeah, I, yeah. That, that's how it goes. And it's with like heroes. somebody discovered, like, they just need a little, little, you know, tickle of the anus to <laughs> tempt somebody to finally use the minus respawn. And like, oh my god, this well, hero is actually amazing. And now they're not using it. This hero's still amazing. Oh, yeah. it's. I think it just comes down to talents, right? Like it was um, yeah. during that Epi chat with Mason. One of the things he brought up was about how like heroes are basically being picked on talents right now. Uh, which is pretty true. I mean, that that's yeah. how, like, Magnus, he only came back at first because of that uh, Empower talent. Lone that it was, it was buffing it by some ridiculous amount. <laughs> Why Zeus is not getting picked. And then it got nerfed, and they're like, oh, hey, Magnus is still dank. Let me tell you, and Zeus's look, talents. Look, look, Rasta got all of his talents buffs and buffed, and he's been picked more than never. So <laughs> Yay. You know, I think there. Trent's right. Um, team back. Well, Mason's right. Well, yeah, but Don't trust Trent, me. I, I think the the point you're making about Lena also is similar to the Furion thing, where both of them fit in fit in that category of heroes that have gotten a lot of stealth buffs oh, over the He's patches. He's gonna be so good. 
Um, and I think, like, Shannon's right. Lena just needed something to get her out in the open. And now it's not even about the response time. It's the I believe it was effect. an anus tickling yes. that you're, you're missing <laughs> yes, the term. That's it. Thank yes. you. Please yes, use that's the term. <laughs> Suns fans' new team, butt plug Dota. Let me tell you. Viper's the next BPD? hero, guys. <laughs> the next BP. BPG would be better gaming. <laughs> <laughs> I can't right. wait to see the logo. The, the logo is just a cork. <laughs> <laughs> just take the Washington Redskins logo. <laughs> oh, okay, jeez. Make it as offensive as possible. All right, well. Oh, my God. That's great. Well, Tinker, well. a uh, Koikpa classic. <laughs> and, uh, ooh, the signature Trent Packs hero, Crystal Maiden, now banned out. The CM. Beautiful hero. Good CM game. Oh, a lovely last. I think that would kind of enable support clockwork, too, if they really wanted to. Absolutely. At least it would let them do it, because that was a nip thing, right? They, yep. They would do those shenanigans. So. Although, but that was really a Yapsor type deal, right? Wasn't and that? Cinderin played it a couple times too. Yeah, he did. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's fair. But uh, but yeah, so I don't, it would be kind of weird to reveal two cores this early. That's the only thing. But with the flexibility, it, it's kind of okay. I'm sure Hani, like I remember him playing quite a bit of Lena support as well uh, in the day. So yeah, it's flexible. But my question is, what is Empire going to pick now? I mean, Jug is banned. It was and probably still is the best pairing with Magnus, even after the changes to both mm -hmm. the power and the move speed. So I'm wondering what they're going to pick with their their uh, their core here for Empire. I think yeah. PA is um, always an option when you look at uh, who pairs nicely with Empower. Troll, also one you don't want to sleep on. I like. Yeah, they play both of those heroes a lot lately, think even without BKB Magnus, like too. Like um, and they should be considering Escape from Cogs, too. So, like, potentially yeah. Faceless Void as well with yeah. Time Walk. Um, yeah. The Blink Strike, as you're saying, the PA is very good. Troll yeah. could run into some trouble with that. I guess um, Slark can be an, an okay option. Oh, yeah. Clockwork yep, too. Slark That's a good too. call, Same actually. Same thing. Yeah. yeah. I like that a lot. Jump in and out. So they have a lot of options. This is a really safe opener for Empire. Oh, oh there he is. The old man. And some golems. Well, great for so the lanes. Give you a This little makes me want to go into like an Earth Spirit next if I'm Nip. Because now you have Fatal Bonds. If you can yeah. get Earth Spirit, who's still sitting in the pool at this point. Yeah, I feel like also because they picked the Warlock, it's very difficult for Lena to be in a four position. I think she's definitely not going to be in that position because... Yeah. No way to set up stuns and things of that right. nature. Warlock you Earth would need Spirit like all three cores to have stuns. Or a yeah. great four five combo. You know, like Earth Spirit can be aggressive, roll around, so put a lot of pressure on, and Warlock helps your lanes, and then together they scale very nicely once the ultimates come out. Well. I like it. At this point, Empire have a pretty clear idea uh, of what Nip's up to though, right? I mean you can kind of assume that that, that four roll is gonna be coming out here in, in the Earth Spirit if you're not gonna pick it, so you can think about that kind of pressure probably coming to your mid lane. You know Clock's going to rotate at level 6. Um, so thinking about that, maybe thinking about those survivable mids as well, uh, which can be a little bit tough when you're trying to find some sort of a balance between a survivable mid as well as someone that pairs up with the Magnus. Oh, they tend to be like ranged oh. blinkers, like Pucker or Queen of Pain or something like that. Well, this is the uh, the old classic now. Mm. Bloodlust plus Empower. Empower, yeah, that's so it's pretty good. They, pick, uh, they have really a lot of choices when it comes to carries now. Um, I think it's definitely going to be PA or Slark now. Because yeah. that, that is I just like PA the double is, buff. I think PA is horrendous this game, though. Remaining. It's well, bad against Lena. It's bad against Lena and Clark. Early. And Warlock. Five everybody. Clark <laughs> because of Blade Mail. Lena because just magic damage owns PA. Yeah. Pick another here. I don't like that one. Another one. Slark is probably the safest All one. All right. Slark is good. Yes. I'm going to stick with the Troll Warlord, and he's going to yeah, buy a troll. Lincolns. <laughs> troll just kills the golems, like, right away. He I'm does. Bad. He's gonna get cogged up. And oh, then... Do you guys actually think? I know you just introduced the CM, but does Trent really ban worthy? Yes, I personally don't so. think so. I don't know. I, I know seen Trent him. thinks he is. Dude, have you guys ever played against Trent? Like yep. he just walks yes. in your lane and he punches you for like eighty damage and stuns you. Yeah, I mean, it's annoying. At level and one. then ten Maybe minutes comes centuries. about and you just push some towers and he stands there like a dipshit and doesn't know what to do. <laughs> I mean, I kind of agree a little bit. I think he does have, he has his value in the laning phase. I but... think his power spike, his power curve is too weird. He's amazing in the first 10 minutes and then really not that great in the mid game. Then once he gets like right, eggs but... or some other item, he comes swinging way back. You, well, it depends on the heroes you're against. More, do you think it's more Triant is that good or he, they're just unfamiliar with him because they haven't gotten That's a chance? It's probably to a bit of both. I think he's that good, personally. It's probably a bit of both. But, uh, I actually don't know. I don't. I haven't played enough Triant to really gauge. Remaining. Plus, it's you know we're talking about pubs. Who gives a shit? Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, um, they also tweaked we do, him uh, too. Don't forget, and I think that that makes a difference. 
We do have the uh, support clockwork revealed. As it'll be a, a bat, I mean, I guess they could do some sort of a shenanigans with like the support bat rider, where that's not exactly unheard of. But either way, um, whoever goes position four, they they've now picked up some uh, serious AOE damage in the bat rider. Fatal bonds really helps uh, boost up the firefly damage overall. It'll likely just be Trixie playing the bat rider in the off lane and the clock trying to get stuff done. Yeah. Um, in that four roll, so snagging up some bounty oh, rooms. There and... it is. We forgot about this guy. Oh. Hey, it's nice. Oh, yeah. Somebody Mr. with a uh, <laughs> built-in magic. Because we got like two two steps of the way there, but didn't quite go over the finish line. We're like, well, Lena's really good against PA because she does a lot of magic damage. Next step, who's great against magic damage? The one carry with a built-in EKB. We, yeah. we didn't even think about this How guy. How is he still in? Isn't this guy supposed to be banned by now? <laughs> yeah. Well, he got nerfed, right? They he did get nerfed a lot. Eh. Well, got nerfed. Rage and open wounds. On rage? Ra ra what? Rage, attack speed, and then open wounds, mana cost. Mana cost, okay. Mm -hmm. Still life stealer though. He he's is still, still life stealer. Yeah. He still doesn't fest bomb, mm -hmm. and he still does a lot of damage late in the game. I, mean, I feel like the attack know. speed, it, like once you get items, doesn't matter because exactly. you're always getting like an echo saber armlet. Those give the attack speeds. So. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Oh. Oh, Sorry, Andrew. Kind of there it goes. Your troll. Goodbye, <laughs> troll. Well, at least they got banned. So there's that. That means you were right. Yeah, exactly. That's what I'm yeah. saying. Yeah. So this is probably off lane Magnus, right? Almost 100. Yes. percent We're looking at a mid laner here. Yeah, I would say, I would so. say so. So uh, what are we thinking, gents? Meepo. Okay, this is no. not so. How about a mid Nyx Assassin? Amazing against Bat Rider. It's a great uh, life stealer carrier. You, I mean, you could That's still go off lane Nyx, and you it's, could still go mid. It's Magnus. pretty good against Lena in terms of scaling with the mana burn. I mean, it is it is mid, an interesting choice. Mid Nyx here, boys. I'm so used to seeing Empire like fifth pick Meepo, even though I, I don't know about this game with the Meepo, but like, I don't know. Well, yeah, I mean, that is actually an option. You're right. Chappy Meepo. Ten Let's see it, buddy. Remaining. Go that route. It's a little scary. Like, Lena Batrider, I don't they have a lot of meat tools to deal with Meepo. Yeah, yeah, it's a bit tough. I don't I don't think they'll go. I was just kind of memeing a little bit. But Does anybody play Invoker? Um, I think so. He got nerfed too, right? What was, what was the Invoker nerf? I missed that. Or did he? I don't uh, know. Well, Midas uh, got a pretty heavy experience right, nerf, Midas. which really hurts Invoker, I think. Oh, Any direct yeah. nerf is a question. You're right. That is a... I don't, I don't think he got a direct nerf. No, but the... Uh, the Midas hurts him probably more than your actual because oh, yeah. he really buys it for experience more than anything. Agreed. <clears throat> I really want a right clicker here. Like I, I can see this puck or this Queen of Pain still being good, but it's just it's hard to go into those heroes when you're not fully abusing in power and bloodlust, you know? Um I, at the same time though, you can build your Magnus a little bit more right clicking and stuff. But Ember's pretty garbage. Oh, right I was now. gonna say that. His oh, brother. Oh man. I should have just said it. Well, I was thinking Storm too, but the, there's so many stuns. I mean, we'll see. It's, I mean, obviously the life stealer uh, vehicle, but yeah, you're right. Yeah. I mean, technically, you have a Magnus vehicle. I, I don't know, man. I mean, like, unless you get the Golem or Lasso on him, it's, or I guess Hookshot too. It can be kind of tough to lock down the Storm in this game. There's not, like, any direct uh, direct stuns except for, yeah, really, there's, re there's really very few direct stuns coming out. All right, what do we think? I, I like the Empire draft a little bit more this yeah. game. Uh, I think just the, the Magnus, Lifestealer, Ogre, they, they've got a lot of options, very good meta heroes right now. Not the easiest game for Storm. Spectre as well can, can play some, some problems there. But what do we think, boys? Is this going to be 2-0 uh, for NIP moving into game three, or are we going 1-1? I'm inclined to go with Empire this game just because of... I mean, I, I really like Mag Ogre, even if they've they've nerfed it a little bit, at least with the Magnus, with the Life Sealer. I, think, I also think it's hard to lock this Storm down, uh, but... They should have picked Nip. I don't know. This is tough. Yeah. Uh, yeah I, I'm actually leaning slightly towards Nip, not going to lie. I don't, I don't know. know. I, I don't have Spectre. enough faith in the support clockwork this game. I don't, That's I don't the know question. how exactly, he's going to yeah. do anything, man. Exactly like, good luck, true. dude. I'll yeah. be impressed, but I'm, I'm going to have to go with Empire. <laughs> hey, if they, if they go past 10 minutes and clockwork's not completely worthless, I'm going to go with Nip. How about okay. that? Okay. All right. That's fair. Well, we'll see what happens. Game number two. Our admin stepped up his game here, appropriately marking <laughs> it for viewers around the world. We've nice. got Annie and Brax once more to take it away. All right, thank you very much, panel. Like we ha have said, we are in game number two of the Betway Arena show match, and this is going to be heated here. We have got some interesting picks, obviously shaking things up with the new patch. Brax, what is your impression of the draft? Sir, Brax, we need you. Potentially first blood up top as Era is caught out here. Ghost Stick and King are chasing him down. There is going to be a skewer back under the tier one tower. Just one more hit is all it would take. But they get the shadow word off and the rest of the Radiant have to retreat. Oh, oh the, the ogre comes in. Too. 
Sprays out the Ignite. They need one more hit. Just a little bit more. He's still ticking down, but not by enough. Unfortunate. Okay. Well, he makes it out with his life there. Uh, interesting. I don't know if Spectre is the best hero for this game because um, I just don't know if he can keep up with the pace of the game. Uh, with Magnus and Lifestealer farms extremely fast there, just playing around this top lane, really hunting for this boundary rune. Yeah, I mean, the global presence of Spectre is really nice. Like, you can always get where you need to be in a team fight. You can keep farming till the very last minute. But, uh, yeah, again, very interesting choice. Do you think we're going to see any interesting itemization on Spectre or just what she typically does? Oh, I typically think the Radiance is the strongest build. When you get it, it has the highest impact of, like, any item you could build on Spectre. But, um... I don't know. I mean, he might choose to go for, like, an earlier fighting build. Manta is really good against Lifestealer. Oh, dire mid. The Courier's waiting next to that Tier 2 tower. Rubik really keen on going in. Sorry. Didn't mean to interrupt. <laughs> oh, that's okay. He's just waiting for it. Yeah, that Courier is patient. But uh, the Spectre ultimate is a good way to deal with Magnus RP. You know, it scouts him out, stops his blink dagger, makes it difficult for him to cast his spells properly. Uh, was that a misplay by the storm, planting two iron trees? And or is that just... Ross and too hard. <laughs> yeah, just way too many happy trees. But yeah, definitely a lot of pressure in this mid area. You've got Hani on that support clockwork like we talked about, just trying to go beat up now on the Rubik who's waiting in the trees. Finally catches a, a whiff of him. And now they're just going to 1v1 it, trying to clip the clockwork a little bit off there, unfortunate. And now finally the courier feels safe to go and travel to Lena. So Lena will get her items off the courier and the courier doesn't die. So success for the dire as King R and Hani are still slapping it out. Now Hani potentially going to lose the uh, the battle here as Ogre comes in. But with Insania coming forward, they're just casting out some casual tick damage onto the Rubik. Nothing too crazy. So these support just kind of dealing with each other. Mid lane, we've got Lena versus Storm. How should that lane be going? It's definitely Lena favored, but the Ogre helping Storm in the early levels makes it a bit easier for Storm, but it's definitely Lena favored. Very easy uh, lane for Lena, actually. Yeah, especially pre-6, they really got to carry out some kills in that Storm to shut them down completely, but man, these this support zero from uh, Radiant just really all up in Dyer's business, trying to keep active at very early levels. Yeah, this ogre's a beefy dude. <laughs> Unfortunately, he did burn all of his mana walking into cogs, so he's just got a little bit less to work with, but eh, just eating up some aggression, punching people. That's what he really wants to do. Yep, Sun's fan was a flame in the support clock, but he's doing work right now, man. He mana burned ogre twice. His job's done. You know, for the rest that's of the value game. Out of the pick. Yeah, he's good to go. <laughs> Mid lane one. Yep. Good things happening here. Top lane, our off lane Magnus going against this Warlock. And now there is going to be that lift and skewer back. They've now isolated the Warlock from the Spectre. Spectre coming in with that dagger. A couple more hits onto Insania. He's so low. They need one more and the Rubik secures the first blood. And that great range on his auto attack. Now being chased down by Era, but they can't finish the job. So just a free first blood going the way of Empire. Yep, Empire's lanes are a bit better. The Ogre helped mid out, so Storm is actually doing fantastic. No. Uh, Lifestealer against the Batrider. Definitely Lifestealer favorite. Batrider can't pressure him at all. And they have this annoying lane against the Spectre. The Magnus into the Rubik Lift combo. And they just don't really have any, uh, you know, zoning power here. Yeah, after that last kill, everyone went and shrined up. So Ogre is now back at full mana, so we can just keep being annoying with those Ignites. And now, ooh, back in the top. They're still going at it. King R trying to do everything he can to zone for this Magnus. <laughs> Just really keeping the pressure on Spectre, but she's still farming well. 17 last hits for her already at three minutes in. It's on bottom. They're actually going into the Chappy here. They could actually kill him here with the uh, cogs. Yeah, he's trapped in. He's sitting in the fire. He's going to be going. His mana's burned up. One more hit should be enough, and they will get it. Hani snaps up the money and the XP for that, so very nice. He's going to be already sitting at level 2 for a roaming clockwork. This is pretty alright. You know, you can't actually get that gank on a lot of support heroes, right? He cogged him in the rage there, so he just sat there until the duration was over. Ran him down. You know, Hani probably went into this game thinking, Guys, they've got Lifestealer. Pick me support clockwork. <laughs> well, I guess clockwork came out first, but they're yeah. on mid now. It's paying off. Now Lena going to be isolated. They lift her back. She is going to light strike array, but it's off the mark. The problem is they just don't have quite enough damage yet. So King R... 
Well, he'll pop in, take some creep shots, but they're definitely holding this lane against Alina while Storm is off just doing Storm things. Gonna go juice himself up in the fountain and get ready for more. Now back top, Ghost Stick. Just gonna take some damage there, run straight into Arrow, but don't think he can do much. It's gonna skewer him back and just TP straight out as there's no stuns available. And we talked about a little bit in draft how there's not a whole lot of reliable lockdown on the dire side, and that potentially could be a real issue for the storm. I mean, yeah, you've got lasso, you've got light strike array if it hits, you've got a hook shot if it's well placed, but I mean, if storms just zip zap it all around the map, there's not a whole lot you can do. Yeah, the problem with uh, the lockdown heroes they have is when you know Nax is inside someone, right? They can lasso the storm spirit who goes in, but then Nax hops out, kills someone. Or they lasso the nakes after he hops out, then Storm's free to do what he wants. It's like, they need something... I mean, they have two that go through BKB, right? They have the hook shot and the lasso. But, um... Oh, and the rock as well. They actually have a lot of spells that go through BKB, but... It might not be enough to actually save the target. Yeah, just reliably landing them and making sure that there's no infest bomb to turn it around is going to be a, a big thing here, so... Right. Down bottom, Hani almost has his level 3, just trying to soak that up, and there will be an initiation onto Trixie here. They get him down, they're munching on him with the open wounds, and it looks like it should be enough trying to cut his way through the trees, but with Lifestealer hot on his heels, they get him down. That's going to be Ogre snapping up the gold for that, so early money for him. He's got his brown boots and almost 500 gold on top of that, and up top, no rest for the Wicked, as this little neutral camp has been a, a huge hot contest. Both teams really wanted to get the most out of that. So right now, Storm Spirit going to be leader of the last hits. I mean, you expect Lena to be holding her own, and she is. She's doing well, but Storm getting a lot of money out of the map right now. King R potentially in trouble here. Don't think he lives through this one. One more slap of Spectre Scythe, and he's down. And Rizrood on uh, Koikva, looking at FN here. Yeah, a lot of Storm's uh, last hits for jungle creeps. But I mean, this CS is still very, very well. This hero, his early game has been nerfed over and over through the patches, and if you can get through that early game though, he's still very strong later on in the game. Yeah, he just not needs to not die pre-6 and he's good, but we're probably gonna see some ganks heading in his, his direction shortly. I mean, he's, he's definitely doing all right. He's got himself soul ring very shortly. Ooh, down bottom. Once again, Batrider in some trouble. He gets the lasso, but what does that really mean? Trixie's still clubbed down once again by Ogre. Yep, tough stuff. Leaning a uh, Batrider against Lifestealer. Very hard matchup. Yeah, I mean, you definitely don't expect Batrider to win, but you gotta mitigate how much he dies. You gotta give him something there. You gotta keep him safe, so... With Hani helping out here, maybe that'll be enough when he respawns to at least hold the lane and make sure Chappie doesn't get out of control. Because even with the nerfs to Lifestealer, he still comes online very quickly, and now that they've got a Storm at level 7, he's ready to go. So overall, Empire's lane phase going very well, actually. Storm is, uh, he has his early game secured pretty much. Uh, Magnus has a decent start as well. Lifestealer doing well. It feels like uh, all these Spectre games kind of go this way, you know? Teams try to salvage how weak Spectre is in the lane phase by pairing him up with some passive heroes that are very strong at laning, like the Warlock. And then, um, I don't know, he's just, he's kind of like this target in the lane phase. Oh, a little juking around trying to secure that double damage rune, and it looks like it will be bottled up by the storm. King R does have to give his life, though. Uh, is that worth it? <laughs> Kill's a kill. Yeah. Spectre gets involved, Haunt comes out. Storm now DD'd up, just getting ready to push wherever he pleases. Clearing out these ancients, slowly but surely. Now down bottom, it's just going to be Chappie versus the world. Two heroes, they're ready to zone him, but he is still farming very well. 56 last hits for him. Overall net worth going to be second on the chart, right behind his Storm, who's also had a really nice lane. And a gank mid lane could just seal the deal on this Lena. Yep, even Magnus getting involved here. Yep, they go in. They got the lift. Skewer back. They are just keeping her controlled. RP committed as well. There are going to be TPs in from Batrider and Warlock coming in here, but he's only level 4. Still no rocks to be dropped, and Trixie just flapping immediately out of where he TP'd into. So, 
Radiant just going forward, holding the Bat Rider back, and well, hopefully just escape out of this. Spectre coming in, drops the dagger onto King R. He's now slowed, but with Storm Spirit there, I mean, they can definitely fight this. They go, they pick on Hani. Hani's holding on to his cog, still has that battery assault. Now Magnus dragged away from the herd, potentially in some trouble here, but they keep the ogre there just to be big and beefy and deterring, and it should be enough to separate this fight. Batrider trying to spray some napalms, but he's fresh out of mana, so Radiant, uh, they just retreat out of this. And they can go ahead and shrine themselves up in another three minutes. Yep, no Firefly there from Batrider, losing a lot of damage. So, I mean, uh, Lifestealer is closing in on his armlet pretty soon. Um, but that's when the action really begins, right? When he gets his armlet and wants to pair up and smoke at, uh, smoke and infest bomb to kill the Spectre. Um, Storm typically is a hero that wants to farm a whole lot. He doesn't really want to fight before his Bloodstone, but you never know. When he's paired up with the Nakes, he has a lot more offensive capabilities. Yeah, we saw there, even just with his support duo, he was able to go and apply some serious pressure to the Dire without spending much. So we'll see if that continues. Uh, again, Lifestealer, Free Farming, our Clockwork. Uh, one of the downsides to the support clock is he still has no level 6, now finally being left to his own to soak. But he'll he'll get that hookshot eventually, and that's when we kind of start to see some of these counter-initiations go the Dire's way. Yep, interesting to see he max the uh, Rocket Flare. I would imagine he'd go for the battery just because it does so much more damage, but I mean, I get it. He's a support clockwork. <laughs> he isn't like meant to deal all the damage. Yeah, also just really good for scouting and I mean, you just see the Rubik, how squishy he is. 720 total HP and two armor. Well, now he's got three, but uh, pretty easy to pick off if he runs away from a fight low health. Just send a rocket flare in his direction. Clockwork sends his regards. Alright, so Era actually has a Mask of Madness in his quick buy on Spectre. I've never seen that before. Well, I have seen that before, but not recently. Ever <laughs> yeah, since not it got this, changed. <laughs> not this decade. Yeah, he's uh definitely going for a bolder play. We're not going to see that very passive Radiance build that Spectre's kind of known for. Not going to be that quick Vanguard defusal either, so definitely shaking it up. I'm curious to see how it's going to scale. Yep, here's the uh, Smoke and Fest gank with Storm and Nakes. Looking at the top lane here. And they're making their way up. Can't be too aggressive here. Again, you don't want to sacrifice the Storm Spirit this early on, so... There they go, going in onto the Spectre here. Her haunt is ready, but they gotta keep her locked down. The rocks will be dropped, but not quite in the center of the fight where they need to be. Insania's gonna go ahead and have the uh, chains stolen, so Fatal Bonds now ready to be used aggressively. Magnus does uh, give his life, and Spectre haunts out, so... Ogre right on top of him. But this is Ogre being surrounded by some unfriendly fellas. Yeah, he gets baited in, just really wanting to go follow up for that Spectre kill, but it costs him his life, so that's a two for one. Or two for nothing, sorry, NIP. Definitely respond to that the right way. Yeah, Clockwork there, ready for the engagement. Warlock close by to drop the rock as well. He even survives through the RP there. Yep. Mid lane, just gonna have a Light Strike Array onto our Storm Spirit here, but he's going aggressive on this. He really wants to fight that Lina. They know all her spells are down. There is gonna be a TP from the Warlock. Can they get the Shadow Word off in time? Oh my. Do a little trade a there. Looks like Koikpa will get some good uh, experience, but does still lose his life to the Rubik, so lots of money going to that support. And he's got himself some arcane boots now. Yep, I think uh, Empire will slow it down a bit. They'll wait for their Magnus Blink Dagger before they really try to go for anything again like that. Um, they do have a small window, though. I mean, Warlock doesn't have ultimate for a minute. So, I guess they'll probably go again. And then afterwards, they'll wait. Yeah, they just can't get too feisty early on. They go and they give a couple more kills like that to Spectre, to Batrider, and all of a sudden there's a, a big net worth disparity, so... Lifestealer now queuing up that Desolator. No surprises, just a really solid piece of his kit. Yeah, he just farmed like... There was like a triple stack on the left side of the Ancients and then a double stack on the right side. He's getting farmed real quick. Yeah, lots of money for him. That is like 2,000 gold in two minutes. Yep, smoke from uh, Nip down bottom. Ogre. Blink on Batrider now. <laughs> yeah, Ogre's gonna eat Goodbye. this one up. 
Looks like he's gonna be separated in. Looks Lifestealer is gonna let himself get lassoed. They do stun the Batrider, maybe trying to turn this one around, but still really tricky. Radiant being outnumbered. They finally rotate in the rest of their crew, and this is where they can start chasing. Quakefa on the run here. Still has that Laguna Blade he's holding on to. Radiant, they're gonna play it safe. They get one. It's a failed gank from Ninjas in Pajamas, and Empire can be happy about that. Yep, a bit greedy there, going for the uh, Lifestealer when he's raged. Even though he's raged when he gets lassoed, he doesn't really take any damage. You know, he has 2,000 HP with his armlet there. They would not kill him at all, even if he didn't get Ogre stunned and Lena could follow up and everything. Yeah, just kind of a way to bring the problem closer to you. Meanwhile, up top, Magnus is very, very close to that Blink Dagger, so assuming all goes well in the next wave, he'll have that. Gets scouted up by Spectre here, but Ghost Stick is, is very close to being able to be mobile and participate in these fights. Batrider. Yep, Mask of Madness almost completed on Spectre. Batrider lasts on 30 seconds. I mean, it feels like they really want to make these ganks happen. They know that they need to fight with Spectre all the time, pretty much whenever they have their spells. I mean, what goes well with this Mask of Madness on Spectre? Like, what's the rest of her build going to look like? I think it's just for farming. It'll be like a normal build afterwards. Is she gonna go back in for the Radiance and have it be late, or just Manta Diffusal? She might just go for a Manta Diffusal. Oh. Well, she'll take a little damage, but with the Shadow Word already on her, it's uh, not hurting her too much. And now chase back in. They go in aggressive blink, and they do find the Rubik here. Follow up with the Light Strike Array, and that'd make easy work of him. That's gonna be about 400 gold going the way of our Bat Rider and. Up top, Radiant seemed to be thwarted from going and keeping pressure on this tower, so all around, Ninjas in Pajamas finding some good space on the map down bottom, Hani finding some space to himself, almost at level 7. Mid lane, we've got Lina continuing her roll in, and oh, there's TP up top as we have got some serious damage coming out. Radiant get that green light, they go in, they kill off the Warlock, but now it's time for a haunt to come in. Shappy isolated here, Dragon Slave gets him solo, he's trying to armlet toggle to save his life, but there we go, Light Striker hits a Magnus Force to run, while underneath the tower, Ogre is picked off as well. So Dire, definitely get in there, they find the right picks, so it's gonna be a Life Stealer and an Ogre in exchange for an earlier Warlock pick, so definitely good for NIP. Yeah, and that's even without the rock there. Yeah, <laughs> really, really well played and chased down and already seeing Lena being pretty accomplished, getting close to that bloodstone. I wonder if Empire feel like they need to keep running at the Spectre. I feel as if they just wait and get their basic items first and then do it afterwards. It would be in a much better spot when they can actually team fight because they're going to farm faster. And obviously Spectre gets really strong when she gets to her items, but they have a window where they'll have their items before Spectre does because they farm faster and they can take the fights much more convincingly. And he does have that Radiance queued up. And uh, actually at the Radius farming right now and with these good team fights, it actually won't be too slow. Yeah, that was a really nice pickup. Like right as that fight started, Spectre just started piling in the gold. We are going to have an Infects to gank coming in and looks like Clockwork's going to eat that one right up, at least saving the Spectre for now. Yeah, definitely. Much better that it was uh, Spectre, or er, Clock rather than Spectre. Yeah, they find a Rubik in return. It looks like that's going to be an easy pick. So again, Era just keeps on farming. They have to sack their position four, but in exchange for a couple more hundred gold, that's going to be pretty nice. This Radiance is not too far off. Down bottom, Lena wasting no time, still adding pressure to this bottom lane if mid becomes unsafe and Radiant. I mean, potentially thinking about a Roche, but even with the Desolator, it'd still be a little too slow. So, I'm just going to be wrapping around, trying to press this mid lane, at least get the tier 1 tower down before they go for anything crazy. Oh, they want to find this Warlock behind the tower here. Yeah, they're ready to go. Looks like they want to jump deeper and try to find Hani, but he's going to cogs himself out of it. Tower, easily picked up there by FN, and now FN jumps forward. Nice little pick onto the Lena. The Golems are going to be dropped. Hookshot in onto the Golem. Hani not finding a great target there. Now Trixie wants to keep pressing forward onto Ghost Stick here. The Haunt comes in. They've got the Spectral Dagger and they do lose the Magnus. Era continues to chase King R who makes it back out under tower. The rest of his team will be safe as well. So again, trading a Rubik and a Magnus for a successful disengage. Probably worth it as they are able to turn this around and a kill on Era is huge. Nicely played there from the Storm and Chaffee and they're going forward. They want to find this kill. Batrider is so low. 
gonna be earned up makes it to the shrine still a while for that's uh back online so that's gonna be the end of the fight there all right well specter did die so that does delay his radiance but he did get two kills in the fight there so not too sad about that one in terms of XP and gold, it still handily goes the way of Empire, so they're pretty happy with that. And the Roche is now really opened up for Empire if they wanted to go for it, with this Tier 1 tower being down. Yep, they do have the tools to take it for sure. Bloodlust and Empower, along with the Desolator. Very fast, killing Roche. Uh, Storm is one of these late-game monsters who completely destroys the game when he has starts like this. Yeah, fresh bloodstone, already up to 15 charges after that really good fight. Just being able to rotate in and kill that spec was so huge. That's how they salvaged it. So, Lena with the bloodstone of her own down to eight. You can just see how a good and a bad fight really flipped the situation. Fresh bloodstones on both mids, but they're feeling dramatically different in terms of power level now. Yeah, definitely. And Empire don't have to wait for these long cooldowns. Their longest cooldowns are RP pretty much all uh, up right now. While Nips still need to wait for their Chaotic Offering on Warlock before they really want to take these fights, along with the Haunts. Yep, they're going to do Roche before the ultimates come up. Yeah, and again, immediately after these fights, I love the Rubik pick, because there's so much good stuff to steal as NIP are a little more ult-focused than Empire. All right, they're going in for the Roche here. They're going to back out. They see that there's some motion around the pit. Dire getting a little bit active. So that's going to be an infest and FN, and maybe they can find something off of this. Dire, they want to play this safe, though. No more free kills for Storm. Yep, Air is closing in on that Relic. He's at 3,200 gold right now. He's actually had a lot of teamfight contribution this game. Getting lots of kills at this Mask of Madness, running down Rubik, Magnus, and all these team fights. Not De bad at all. Definitely an unusual item pickup. Is that going to be more meta, or is this just a really item-specific game? Um, I mean, I'm sure he's played around with it before, but it's good for farming. But, um, I don't know. It's probably a preference thing. Uh, I don't think it's good in all games, but in this game, they definitely need to fight in order to actually win the game. Like, they can't just wait till they get Radiance before they fight. They need to fight pretty much every time they have their cooldowns to make space and stop Empire from getting what they want. So yeah. it definitely helps with that. And let's a greedy core just come online a little bit earlier and give that semblance of starting to do a lot of damage early on in the game. So we'll see how that pans out, if this delayed Radiance is going to make a difference or not, because it looks like Spectre's still on track to have it well-timed. Already now, almost at Relic Gold, there's a huge smoke up, though, from the Radiant. Making their way up through the Dyer's area. FN with the Infest Bomb leading the charge. And who are they going to find here? It looks like Hani is going to eat the initial round of damage. The Golems come out, but Batrider actually drags Storm and friends out of the Golems. Now Chappy just lays into Insania. Storm Spirit is still alive with some clutch zips. He will get out. Now Spectre is going to be haunting back in, trying to re-engage here. Light Strike away, way off the mark. RP onto nothing. Oh, Magnus is going to get punished for that as Batrider, Clock, and Lena try to chase him down. King R going to be blasted onto the high ground, and now Batrider lifted up into the air. Maybe they can hold him back as Chappie's going to be wrapping around. Storm is back in this. The shrine activated for the dire heroes. Is it going to be enough to save Trixie? Trixie somehow still finds a kill for himself before he goes down. Hani, one of the lone survivors. Chappie's still moving forward, and they get the kill. Look at the damage coming out of that. Wow, okay, lots of blood. In the end, it's going to be a uh, four for three favoring Empire. Yep, yeah, that was an RP on the nothing too. Yeah, that was not great. Storm now 19 bloodstone charges. I'm getting very close to that orchid. What a chaotic fight. <laughs> Absolutely. Out, Rubik steals haunt. You got all sorts of nonsense going on everywhere. Oh, that's um, why there are so many Spectre. Rubik's. Yeah. At least Spectre does have his Relic now, so he's getting close to the Radiance. Man, Ogre just fearless, charging in onto Koikva, and they've got the follow-up. They bring in the Infest Bomb, and they're not going to find one. They're going to find two. Quick, easy money for them. And you see Batrider kind of flapping around, thinking, all right, do I initiate on this? But they're really just teasing out the Radiant, making them potentially push too hard. They're going to be feeling really good though in terms of overall net worth about 3,000 in their favor the map has opened up to them again the storm be quickly becoming a huge problem 21 bloodstone charges now 
And he's uh he's hungry. Alright. Yeah, getting out of control here. Yeah, this is uh You know, we talk about late late game storm being a monster, but if NIP are gonna play this loosely with positioning, he's gonna get there way sooner than you think. As he goes in, trying to find another one now, briefly gets stunned up, but another electric vortex secures him a double kill before anyone can react on NIP. Yep, that's the orchid completed now too. My god. Lincoln Sphere coming up next, so he will literally be untouchable. There's no Warlock ultimate. This could be a tier 3 tower here. Yeah, they push it really quickly. They just gotta make sure Chappie stays nice and healthy. One initiation on him could be uh, pretty lethal, but Zimfest is up in 30 seconds, so he can just go smack some jungle creeps till he gets full health and just keep rotating with that storm. Just a really nice vessel for him this game. Yep, we've got the Radiance completed on Spectre now. It's on the Courier. Man, look at that net worth jump after that string of storm kills. That just spiked in Empire's favor to almost 7,500. Yeah, you just got five kills in like two minutes. Yeah. It's uh, it's feeling good. 23 charges on Storm's Bloodstone. Lena's is down to six. Not great. Almost four times as many Bloodstone charges on, uh, on Storm. And that's some NA math for you off the top of my head. Nice, nice. <laughs> I did good. A mathematician. Yeah, I was never great with multiplication. Anyway, smoke up on ninjas in pajamas coming down into this bottom lane. Chappie gonna be paired up with Ghost Dick, and they are just fine. Look at that scan. Oh, that yep, is on the, the money. So, All right, guys, we found him. Yeah, Let's they leave. know what's going on. And Radiant have no incentive to really stay around. Worst case, this tier two gets pushed as Radiant do whatever they want and set up for a really great counter initiation. Looks like Roche is going to be the play. They're pinging it out as they see all of the uh, the dire occupied bottom. So tier two for Roche trade, very, very common. And in this game, I think Empire are just going to get more out of it. Yeah, definitely. Roshan is huge for their heroes. Aegis on Storm Spirit means he can just zip around these fights carelessly. Doesn't have to try to wait and dodge all these spells. So, tower getting low, Koikva just hammering away on that thing. So, again, tier 2 for Roche coming out at the same time. But right now, Radiant, they are completely ready to fight. They've got their ults up, infest up in 7 seconds, and that's going to be either more kills or a tier 2 tower of their own, depending it's on how many... such unfortunate timing. Like, Spectre just finished Radiant, they're looking for a fight. They get hit by the scan. Empire reads it, goes straight to Roshan, and now it's like, well, we have Radiance. We've been waiting for this the entire game, but we still can't fight. I mean, can they defend this tier 2 at all? Like, can you try to put an optimistic Batrider in there and look for a cheeky lasso, or are they just going to get completely no, outmaneuvered? Not. It's one of the hardest towers to defend in the game. There's so many angles to come from. It's just not worth defending this tower, typically. The best thing Nip can hope for is to uh, try to make Empire come back to their base by pressuring in the bottom lane, but... Looks like they're not in so much of a rush at all. They're just, you know, playing it slow. They know that they're in the driver's seat right now. They just need to find a pick, get their lanes out. Not, uh, they just want to look for um, a position where they don't have to trade anything on the map. You know, they want to get their lanes out. They know that they can't get going on, and then they can just run down a lane together. Yeah, they're playing very, very tight. Again, that's one of the reasons the Clockworks, Hookshot, the Batrider's Lasso are not super successful this game, is that Empire are really play in that buddy system. They are rarely out alone, so yeah, you get a lasso onto the lifestealer and then three more heroes come and rip you to shreds. So we'll see if NIP can salvage this. Looking tough just from a net worth perspective, about 10,000 going their way. Overall experience, 7,500. And in terms of levels, starting to make a difference. You got your level 20 on Storm Spirit and Lifestealer, whereas uh, Spectre's still 18, oh, Lena 19. Yeah, you can definitely see the level disparity in the supports. Clockwork being only level 9 right now. Oh. He had a fantastic early game, but just having some difficulty transitioning. Feels like that's what the hero struggles with, unless he has a Midas. So Radiant, they're uh, wrapping through the jungle together. You got a Shadow Blade on the Magnus now, so Blink Shadow Blade for him. Force queued up next. He is going to be super mobile and Ghost Stick. All he wants to do is get vision, get a little bit of lockdown on his targets, and then FN can zip in from pretty much anywhere on the map now with all this mana. 
Yeah, and with the Orchid too, there's not anything that they can do about it. None of them have any items to deal with Orchid at all. He's got Lincoln so soon as well. So Storm Spirit, really a problem right now. What's the best way for NIP to deal with that? Can you just try to farm your Spectre and hope the issue goes away if you close your eyes hard enough? <laughs> He's not going away. They're going to hope he disconnects, spills water in his keyboard or something. <laughs> Yeah, it's tough. I mean, can a super farm Spectre overcome that? I mean, Spectre, when he's farmed, can definitely overcome uh, most of these problems. Uh, they have Lita, Batrider, good heroes at dealing with Storm Spirit if they can ever catch him out. But if Storm gets the initiation up first and he makes the long roll with the nakes inside him, it's going to be really tough to handle, especially with this Aegis. But, you know, Aegis is going to run out pretty soon. So, you know, maybe it's not the end of the world right now. Ogre just casually waiting there, splashing out ignites onto the waves, and man, he's uh playing dangerous there. Lena tries to jump right after him, but has to back off now. All of NIP cornered here. They go in. Batrider <laughs> munch down before the fight really even starts out. The Orchid debuted onto the Lena, but you now for now, Radiant will take what they get. Batrider out of the fight for 45 seconds, and this is Radiant's half of the map here. Like this, this is just theirs. Yeah, everything outside this line belongs to the Radiant. <laughs> Pretty much. I mean, you do have Spectre trying to go for a push, does shove into the Tier 2 tower, but immediately has to TP out as, yeah, Spectre can clear lanes, but she can't fight yet. She can't 1v1 because you're so scared of Storm Spirit just appearing out of nowhere. Up in Nakes is extremely tanky right now, too. Yeah, well, he's, he's going to get... the right click, though. Yeah, he is... That was just like Lena slapping away at him for 20 seconds, and he doesn't particularly care. Nice dodge of the Light Strike Array from our Storm Spirit, who's slowed down from the upheaval, but again, with the Lincoln Sphere, with 24 Bloodstone charges, he's not hurting. Oh, not at all. Looks like he's just gonna heal up the Life Stealer, wound some creeps, come back. So, according to this Roshan timer, when is Aegis out? Do you know? Uh, it's still a little bit of time. It's, yeah, right now. <laughs> okay, when it hits so the bottom. Now. Yep. And then three more minutes till we see when the RNG is. Okay. So, no more Aegis Hunt Storm. Um, I mean, they didn't rush with the Aegis at all. They know that they're in a good spot right now. They're out farming heavily right now. Nakes is getting gigantic. It's getting all these tank items, making it really hard for him to be dealt with. And uh, now, you know, Storm has Lincolns, Boots of Travel, pretty strong still, even without the Aegis. Yeah, we saw some Lifestealer tweaks and nerfs in 7.05. Is that really enough? Because it still feels like he's on top of the world, and he's just such a safe core. So they keep tweaking these things that make him overall weaker, but it doesn't handle the core problem of him being, like, uh, extremely strong in the lane. A lot of these offlaners can't pressure him at all, like we saw Batrider, you know, his sticky napalm stacks get removed instantly by Rage. And then he still has this Nakes Bomb aspect where, you know, as long as you get the initiation out first, you're typically going to win the fight unless you have some heavy lockdown for him in uh, Rage. But still, he rages and he's still got 30 armor, 3000 health, you're not doing a whole lot to him. I mean, could this problem have been helped out if Clockwork had really stuck with Batrider in the lane and maybe applied a little more pressure? Oh, gosh. Oh, man, no mercy. Storm Spirit from downtown just comes across the river and lays into the Warlock. No, I think they're a combination of heroes are just too bad to deal with uh, the Lifestealer in the lane. Both Batrider and Clockwork don't really do anything. They managed to kill him once. You know, he wasn't really expecting it to happen, but if they're just kind of sitting there in the lane, Nothing really happens to him. Look how fast this tier 3 is going down just with his raw damage and the desolator. And that's done. That's cracked. They're going straight in for Rax. And I mean, you can feel NIP just unable to deal with this. The Lena just shadow blading away. They will catch the Magnus, who is just making a distraction, making the space as they get a full lane of Rax and everyone else is able to retreat. Bottom lane, Spectre trying to go for the split push. And she'll get the tier 3 tower, which is pretty significant. You can now clear out shrines, get a little bit of Roche control back, but not enough to even out this game. Yep, tier 3 tower, very important. Now they can take out these shrines. Zip back, back in. Wow, they unleashed the rocks for this. Is it going to be enough to find anything? 
Appears not, as there is a Glimmer Cape on the Lifestealer. He's invised, and they might be able to turn this. They've got the lift on the Rubik. They go for the Yules and the Lifestealer. NIP looking to isolate him. The Courier comes in, dropping off some goodies. Now there's a Storm Zip around. They catch the Bat Rider here. Unfortunate, the Trixie might go down for the second time, and he does. Chappie's still alive, still fighting, takes a Glimmer Cape. Is he going to get out of here with clutch armlet toggles? Negative Urn comes in. Is this just all too much for him? Looks like he hops inside. FN, what a vessel. That's that's what true friends are for right there, Brax. That's right, get in me. <laughs> okay, sir. Insania now uh, trying to play ring around the rosy there, but is picked off. We could be close to a GG at 34 minutes as things are just starting to spiral out of control here. Buybacks few and far between. Clock and Spectre, the only ones on their team with it. Lena will be up soon. But is it really enough to preserve their structures? A second lane of Rack's gonna be taken and potentially Mega's creeps. Yeah, hard on Nakes too. He's <laughs> not taking any damage right now. I hear Mott like whispering in the background, like, come on, Megas, you can do it. He's really all <laughs> about these Mega creeps, man. All right, Lena. Oh god, they got a they got vision. They put a sentry ward down. So she's forced to uh, scramble out of there. Batrider can't find that lasso even on King R. And uh, well, Sunstrike, or rather Light Strike Array. Not doing much. Chappie now totally isolated. Mega creeps are out, and Chappie just hops into a creep and bails out. So in the end, Empire go in, take exactly what they want, and force out the GG at 35 minutes. Well played all around, just feeling dominant right from the laning phase. Yep, solid game. Uh, fifth pick Storm Spirit, very strong. Fifth pick Life Stealer, very, very hard to deal with. Or sorry, fourth pick Life Stealer. Yeah, nice game. Potentially some uh, some server issues, but they, yeah, that was a really nice game to watch. You could just feel the synergy. Of course, the storm just getting balling out of control immediately after his bloodstone purchase was great, but it just didn't seem like NIP could have done a whole lot to mitigate that. Uh, going for the Spectre as their position one was optimistic. I like the choice to go for a Mask of Madness, but it just didn't seem to get them online quick enough to deal with how active Empire were. So, any last thoughts for game two? No, I mean, these teams are very close. We saw Game 1, Ninjas in Pajamas taking that one, and Game 2, Empire taking this one. I definitely think there was a very heavy draft favor for Team Empire this game. So let's see what uh, Nip can do in Game 3 to bounce back. All right, to talk about that more, let's go ahead and kick it back to our panel.